decision to deploy the army in the south has just been reached. Will the army assist in the disarmament of Hezbollah? The army now is going to the south according to the resolution 1701 uh, to uh, have 15,000 uh, uh, troops uh, in that area and uh, to help to make uh, security, help the people to go back to their villages. Does that include the disarmament of Hezbollah? Uh, you see, the disarmament of the Hezbollah is another uh, question. The dis uh, because if you look at the resolution, there is nothing that says to disarm the Hezbollah. Is it your belief that Hezbollah should be disarmed? I am, uh, my belief is that it is a matter that the Lebanese amongst themselves must have a consensus uh, concerning this very important subject. As okay. you know, they were having a dialogue about this subject before the attack, and they must continue this dialogue, and it is something to do with the Lebanese. Resolution 1559 calls for the disarmament of Hezbollah. How can there be peace with Israel if there is no disarmament of Hezbollah? Because of the uh, Resolution 1559, there was the dialogue, uh, and it was going on, and it was successful in solving many problems. There was still the uh, uh, armament of the Hezbollah. Would you, are you in favor of the disarmament of Hezbollah? Uh, I can tell you uh, that uh, if it weren't for Hezbollah, uh, <coughs> Israel would have come here and stayed in my place. So what do you think is, will be my answer? Israel said all along it did not wish to be inside this country. It remembers the heartaches of 1982 to, to the year 2000. It did not want to occupy Lebanon. It wanted the Katusha rockets to stop raining upon it to do so require the assistance of this government. Why has your government not assisted in the disarmament of Hezbollah? Israel has been saying many things that came out not to be true. And every time they say they want peace, they attack Lebanon. It's the seven times that uh, they attacked Lebanon. And this time, they, uh, they destroyed, really, uh, most of the infrastructure in Lebanon, killed innocent people, wounded and all that. And they say they want peace. They are the attackers. We are not the attackers. We're defending our land. Should the two hostages, should the two soldiers, Israeli soldiers, be returned to Israel? Uh, the two soldiers must be exchanged with the three that has been 30 years in Israeli prison. Well, as time goes on here, is it your hope to have long-term peace with, with, with Israel? And is it your sense that there can be long-term peace as long as Hezbollah is controlling the southern part of this nation? As long as the U.S. Uh, is uh, supporting Israel to do whatever it wants, 100% bias to Israel, there will never be peace in this region. There must be, I am sure that the uh, American people, uh, if they knew what happened in Lebanon, uh, they wouldn't have accepted uh, the present uh, administration to give green light for one month to hit Lebanon. Well, be sure if the administration is fair uh, and we don't ask her not to be with Israel. It has been always with Israel, but you had administrations before, they were with Israel, but they were not 100% and things were going towards peace. But now, the way they're doing, war will bring war. Violence will be a spiral of violence, and it will not solve the problem. The only way is for the U.S. not to be 100% biased to Israel, and then Israel will know that she has to uh, sit around the table and have a dialogue. And then I'm sure there will be peace, and that's all Lebanon is asking for. Do you think Lebanon likes to be attacked every time it is prosperous? Seven times now, during the two uh, last decades? I don't think so. So all we're asking is that maybe now, after what happened, and that Israel saw that they cannot uh, defeat uh, Hezbollah, and I said it day one, uh, I'm not saying it after, and nobody believed me, because I said, and I learned that in the war college in the U.S., when you don't know where is the guerrilla, you cannot uh, uh, catch it, you cannot beat it, you cannot defeat it, and that's what happened. And as you know, even the uh, foreign minister of Israel said the best uh, army in the world cannot defeat Hezbollah. So why come and destroy all Lebanon and then say we cannot beat Hezbollah? And when they cannot beat Hezbollah, they start hitting all the civilians, hitting uh, houses where there are no uh, combatants and there is nobody. So now that they have stopped, maybe they will realize 
and most importantly, the U.S., that the only way is to sit around a table and talk uh, and take as a base the international law. So that I'm clear, you blame President Bush for this war? I blame the U.S. for having given a green light to Israel to for one month to pound Lebanon without any result. President Bush says there was no green light. This was Israel's conflict that the president in the end stepped in with, along with the United Nations to stop the conflict with Resolution 1701. Well, believe me, the first three days, they thought they would finish with Hezbollah. When they couldn't, uh, there was talk about in the UN to stop the fire. Even if you remember, uh, a week after the uh, start of the war, Mr. Annan said there must be a ceasefire, not only stopping the hostilities. But uh, uh, everybody agreed except the US. So it gave a green light. You have always supported Hezbollah, why? Because Hezbollah, I don't know any uh, Hezbollah when I became commander-in-chief. And when I became commander-in-chief of the army, at the time there were sectarian brigades and they wanted it that way because it couldn't be national. So when I arrived, I said the first thing I would do is to have a national army. And we mixed all the brigades with all the different religions in each brigade. And that's why now you can send any brigade to the south. Uh, it's not like before, it's a Christian brigade. Uh, if we can send it, or it's a Druze, or it's uh, another one. Now all brigades can go to the south because it has become national. And because of that, the army was really, uh, and is still doing a very good job, uh, uh, security, uh, stability inside Lebanon. But at the time, we, and now, we cannot stand in the face of Israel. So it was a very good thing that there was the resistance, and the resistance is the only way to be able to liberate our land. And we did it. Nobody believed. And so what I'm saying is that it has become the resistance complementary to the army, whereas we ha the, in the army there is the operation room that has nothing to do with their operation room of the uh, resistance. Because if you know anything about the resistance, it becomes weak. Nobody knows anything about it, nor me, nor even the ministers of Hezbollah. You know, know. nothing of the resistance? You know nothing? of Hezbollah's tactics? N nothing. And that's what Mr. makes it strange. Mr. Strength. President, with due respect, how can the commander-in-chief of a nation know nothing about the controlling force for, for one-third of a country? Of course. How because you know I tell you why. Because if I start knowing about Hezbollah, then Hezbollah will be like a conventional army, and then it will be weak. And it is good that nobody knows about what they're doing, because that's how they win. So instead of you controlling Hezbollah, Syria controls Hezbollah, which controls you. You're very it? mistaken. Syria has nothing to do with it, because the ones that are fighting are Lebanese. The demands are Lebanese. What are we asking for? Shiba Farm is ours, and Syria is saying it's Lebanese. Why why don't they give it back to us? Because they're using the water of Shaba now. They're putting uh, electronics to spy all over the region. At the same time, they have the best ski resort. So what has it to do with Syria? All we're doing, and believe me, I didn't know any Syrian when I became commander-in-chief. And well, few, you certainly know Syrians now, with all due respect. Mr. Believe President, me, when I was a commander-in-chief, when I became commander-in-chief, I didn't know one Syrian. I didn't know any resistance. I didn't know anybody. Mr. But I, I came as a commander because they thought I could bring all together the religions of Lebanon in one army. And that's what I did. And when I saw the best interest of my country is to have a complementary resistance, I was happy that they were there. And because of that, we could liberate or else we would have been now occupied like we were uh, according to the resolution 425. They should have left 30 years ago. They didn't leave except by force. Art, you would not be the president of this country were it not for the changing of the rules by Syria. Is that accurate? That's not true because my predecessor had the same uh, uh, law in the Lebanese parliament changed and he stayed three years on. And the same thing happened with me. But with my predecessor, nothing was said. Why? Because I say that we should be strong in Lebanon and face Israel. And this Israel doesn't like. Why and you, because you, of that, the US doesn't like. And that's why now 
when your uh, foreign minister comes to Lebanon, she doesn't come to see me. Why? Because she doesn't like that I say we must be strong in Lebanon. That's all. The excuse of having three years more, uh, it is like uh, uh, an excuse to use to say we, wa we don't want to see him. But the real reason is not that, because according to the Constitution, they changed it according to the Constitution. It has been done uh, before by the Lebanese Parliament, and because of that, I was re-elected. And they know it is constitutional. And the proof is that when they had the Committee of Dialogue, everybody agreed that they couldn't do anything about it because it was according to Constitution. Now, if I said that uh, uh, the U.S. is doing a very good job in Lebanon, believe me, next day, Condi will come here. Is it possible that Condoleezza Rice didn't come here because you support an organization which the president considers to be a terrorist organization, an organization which has indiscriminately rained rockets upon your neighbors to the south, an organization which controls part of your country without even your knowledge? Why should she come and speak to you when you're not even in control of a terrorist organization? Believe me, uh, Hezbollah is a national resistant movement that now, after this war, has become even stronger than before and respected by most Lebanese and, believe me, by most Arab population. All now are with Hezbollah. Because for once, somebody could stand in the face of Israel and tell her, you cannot use your smart bombs that you get from the US. You cannot use your uh, uranium depleted bombs, your cluster bombs. You cannot use your phosphorescent bombs, all these that come from the U.S. and hit Lebanon. They are attacking Lebanon. We're not attacking Israel. Did we go one inch in Israel? We didn't. So it's all propaganda. And unfortunately, the U.S. people is not seeing what they should see of the massacres that happened. Did any of them see the massacre of Kana 1 and Kana 2 in the U.S.? Nobody. Because they don't want the people of the U.S. see the things that are happening because of the green light of the U.S. The Syrian government supplied the weapons to Hezbollah. Will you allow that to continue? Who's saying that Syrians are supplying the arms? It's all propaganda from here and there. Where did they get Nobody the knows weapons? where they get their weapons, and that's their strengths. That's what I've been trying to tell you. So you're not willing to, to admit that Syria and or Iran are supplying weapons to Hezbollah? All I'm saying is that I don't know, and believe me, that uh, nobody knows except Hezbollah where they get their uh, armament or else they would have stopped it a long time ago. Uh, you have uh, uh, spying satellites, you have everything. So why? Because it's a very uh, good kept secret by Hezbollah. And that's what makes it strength to stand in the face of Israel. Are you a puppet of Syria? Do you think if I was a puppet of Syria that I would be fighting with my life for my land? Do you think that if I wasn't national that I would be with the resistance? You see, I, am, uh, I have my convictions since I was a child and since I was a uh, junior officer. I thought the same I'm thinking now and the same words I used to say as a commander I'm saying now. I am a 100% nationalistic Lebanese that wants Lebanon to be strong. And if Syria is helping Lebanon, they're very welcome, they're my friends, and I welcome them to help us. But now, all they're doing Syria, they're helping us in uh, everything that's humanitarian, whether it is uh, uh, they took all the uh, refugees that went there, they're sending us food, their medicine, etc. Even that the Israelis are not allowing to go in, saying these are missiles. And they hit many trucks. Not of them was in it a missile. They were vegetables, they were food, they were medicine, they were ambulance. And because the international media doesn't show that, so they have an opinion that everything is happening because Hezbollah is a terrorist. It is not. It is a national resistance. And that's why I am with that national resistance if it could stay in the face of Israel. If it weren't for uh, the uh, uh, resistance, believe me, that Israel would have done like it did in 82. It would have come and sit here in the palace. 
You've now said that you're aligned with a state which, which the United States and the Western world consider to be a terrorist state. You have aligned yourself with uh, Hezbollah, which the President of the United States and, those, and others at the United Nations have called terrorists. You've aligned yourself with them. You've made a decision not to insist that they be disarmed. Is this in the best interest of the people of the south of this nation? Do you anticipate that peace can continue with a terrorist organization, as described by President Bush, in control in the south of this country? And, and will, you, will you permit that to continue? I am aligned to the nation of Lebanon and the interests of Lebanon. Whoever comes to help Lebanon, they're very welcome. If the U.S. would have wanted to help Lebanon, he would have been very welcome. And I said it when I was commander in chief, when I got this excess material from Germany, I thanked the U.S. at the time because they uh, wanted to make an arm deal and at the time uh, there was corruption. So I said, no, we want to get them for free. And they gave us nearly for free, one Jeep for $100, etc. Now, Syria helped me when I started with the army and that's how I knew the, uh, the Syrians when we started and we wanted to unite the army, there was no army. They helped us in that. And at the same time, Hezbollah was the only uh, organization that could stop in the, uh, 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 stand in the face of Israel. And that's why I consider that Hezbollah is doing a wonderful job uh, for the safeguard of Lebanon. Now, what the U.S. thinks, what Europe thinks, they have their own interests in the Middle East. They're thinking about a new Middle East, thinking like that they will subdue all the uh, uh, region by having small states, and there was talk about religious states, whereas in that area, Israel will be the strongest, and with Israel as a proxy to the U.S., it will do whatever it wanted, especially concerning the oil. You seem very angry. Of course. After seeing yourself, what they did with my country, how they demolished it, how they hit the infrastructure, how they killed these babies, these women. Hezbollah killed For what? Hezbollah. For, for Hezbollah. just because they couldn't get Hezbollah? Mr. President, Hezbollah captured two Israeli soldiers to begin this conflict and then indiscriminately fired rockets into civilian areas. They killed women and children. I went to the funeral of an Arab woman and her daughter. I saw a young, a young woman who, who down along the Sinai was, was, was murdered by, by these terrorist rockets. You, you don't condemn the use of Katusha rockets fired upon innocent civilians in the north of Israel? Well, I'm telling you that... I, it, was a, it was a specific question. The, it is the fault who started all that? But, sir, if you say, the, uh, very specifically, Mr. President, with all due respect, do you condemn the launching of Katusha rockets on innocent women, children, and civilians in the north of Israel or not? You ask me a question, I will ask, uh, answer first things first. You said that because they abducted the two soldiers, all this started. This is wrong, and everybody now knows that it was pre planned. They used it as an excuse. And when Hezbollah took the two, they thought it would happen like it happened three years before with Mr. Sharon when they had an exchange. So the Israelis were waiting for that pretext like the one they used in 82 to attack Lebanon and occupy it. The reason, if you remember, was that a, an Israeli ambassador was killed in London. It was an excuse. And the same thing is there. So they started this war. And did we attack Israel? We didn't start. They attacked and they started bombing with aircrafts and all that. And then you tell me to tell you about the result of this attack. If you come and want to kill me, so you want to shoot me, what do I do? I have to shoot first before you kill me. <laughs> so what they did is that they were shooting us all the time and we couldn't do anything because they were getting the civilians. They were so getting fired, the Hezbollah. So Hezbollah fired on their women and children? No, who said that? When the Israelis were using aeroplanes hitting uh, Hezbollah, uh, at the time they couldn't get to Hezbollah in three days, they started hitting the buildings. And Hezbollah, the only thing they had was the rockets and they were 
uh, shooting at the uh, Israeli uh, where they were uh, in the front lines in the north, etc. Now, what happened before, like I said, when you start the war, you don't know how it, uh, it ends up. It was escalating, but who started it? It was Israel. I need an answer on Katusha's. I stood in, in Kiryat Shemona uh, in the north of Israel and watched rockets rain around the town on women and children. Do you condone or condemn the use of, of, of Katusha rockets against the people of Israel? Why you ask one-sided questions like the U.S. does? Why don't you say about Kana? Why don't you say about the buildings they were bringing down with one ton, three ton bombs? Why don't you say about the 1,500 killed? Nobody looks at that. All you see is that there were rockets coming in Kiryat Shomona. If the Israelis don't wage war on us, then nobody's hurt. That's what I'm saying. All I'm saying is that war is bad for everybody. That's why the only way is to stop that and sit around the table. What happened with the resolution? They said uh, uh, they want to stop the hostilities. Stopping the hostilities, they said, it doesn't mean stopping the fire. And stopping uh, hostilities, they said, well, we want to go on blockading Lebanon. Why? Because uh, uh, now they are uh, uh, explaining the resolution the way they want? Well, we're waiting for medicine, we're waiting for food, we're waiting for all that to come to the Lebanese, and the Israelis are blockading, and nobody's doing anything. Nobody looks at these things. That's why I come back to my first reasoning I was telling you about. War is bad for everybody, but who, start, who is starting every time this war? Are we going inside Israel? Israel has still the Sheba farm. Sheba farm is ours. Do you think if the state of California was taken by Canada, you would accept that? With due respect, the United Nations says Sheba farms is the property of, of Syria, not the property of Lebanon. That's what the United Nations, which you have so, have so gingerly reminded us, refused to come in and stop this war because the President of the United States would not. I'm going to try one more time. Do you condone or condemn the use of Katusha rockets on civilians in the north of Israel? I will tell you one more time. Sheba was said by the UN, it's Syrian. And when we ask the UN, is it uh, 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 the UN that says uh, who is the owner of Sheba? He said, uh, the UN uh, answered officially, it is something to do between the Syrians and Lebanese. They say, what is Sheba? The Syrians say, Sheba is Lebanese. So it should go back to the Lebanese. Back to my question. Now, back to your question. War is bad for everybody. And I answered that by saying that let Israel stop uh, the aircrafts and all that, and then it will be much better for everybody. You condemn the, the aircrafts on the part of Israel. You haven't condemned... I condemn war. Who starts the war? Have you, kidnapped, have you condemned the kidnapping of the two Israeli soldiers? Uh, why don't you ask about the three who are in my, prison? Because my question was, do you condemn the kidnapping of the two Israeli soldiers, and should they be returned in exchange for prisoners to Israel? I am saying that if the resistance didn't have prisoners, they wouldn't have okay. done that. I understand. Have you spoken with Hassan Nasrallah? No. You, you've not spoken with Hassan no, Nasrallah? No. Why? Why? Because we don't know where he is. We don't know where he is. Do you think that we know where he is? Then the Israelis would have known. And the Israelis said they wanted to kill him. Do you think this is done in the world to say we want to target somebody and kill him? And nobody says anything in the world. And now, after the war finishes, Mr. Olmert said, we're going to go after him. Why? Nobody asks such questions. You see, you're asking in a biased way. Maybe those Katushas we went back to has something to do with it. What Katushas? The Katushas that you won't say whether you condemn or condone. We, you see, you are biased. You're asking biased I ask questions. You a question. There is no because bad question. Because I'm there's answering. Only a bad answer. I'm answering. I'm telling you that war is bad for everybody. Of course. So yeah. you want me to get an answer that you want me to answer. Well, I would appreciate I'm not anything. going to answer and, uh, uh, except what my conscience uh, uh, tells me to. I'm telling you, war is bad for everybody. It's bad with the, everything that's happening now. It, I hope it stops, and then maybe there is a reason that they can't start peace talks. 
not to stop the fire now for a while and find another excuse to do it again in the future. You were a commander in the very army which you said was not capable of dealing with, with, with Hezbollah in the south. Uh, will that army be capable of keeping the peace there and will that army uh, stop what uh, much of the Western world continues to, c considers to be terrorist activities on the part of Hezbollah? I didn't say the army was not capable. I said that the army was doing its job in theory, security and stability, and the resistance was doing its job stopping Israel for uh, uh, when uh, first to liberate our land and then stopping it from continuing uh, the attacks on Lebanon. And uh, all I'm saying is that now it's up to the Lebanese to have a consensus concerning the arms of Hezbollah. So it sounds to me like you don't condemn the, the use of the Ketushas. I know you're not saying that, but in effect you are saying that. All I'm saying, war is bad for everybody. Oh, I know, that's a great line. I appreciate okay, that line okay. too, but it doesn't answer the question. And, and, and I, I was told that you wouldn't condemn. You the think use. you want to put words in my mouth? No, I'm not going to. <laughs> okay, I, then. I was told that you wouldn't condemn so them. So don't try hard about this. Well, I, I was told you would not condemn them, I, but I'm somewhat surprised. Because I've, I've heard so many wonderful I am things. saying war is bad for everybody, whether it's for Israel or for Lebanon, for everybody in the world. So let the U.S. not be biased, and Israel will not wage war on Lebanon. If it weren't for uh, the resistance, uh, Israelis would have been walking now in Beirut and here. You think that the Israelis want to be walking in Beirut? They did it in 82. Why are you I surprised? Know they, I know they did it in so, 82. They've so, been very clear about how that process didn't go very well, and they didn't want to be back in here. You don't believe them either? Uh, of course not. Is it your hope to someday have any communications with Condoleezza Rice or the President of the United States, or would you really rather not? Well, I tell you, uh, all uh, during my career, I had contacts with U.S. responsibles, and no, I course. met all of them. Uh, I met uh, even uh, uh, Secretary of State uh, Condoleezza. She came to see me about a year ago. Of course. Uh, but then, when they started talking about uh, the disarmament of uh, Hezbollah, they didn't like what I thought. So they said, we stop seeing him. OK, they stop. It's their own affair. If they come back, they're welcome. If they don't, it's their affair.